Welcome to our lecture online. Now in the first video, we saw the theoretical concept of what Green's theorem really means. And here to get a better feel for it, we're going to do a small practical example of that. Here again, we have the theorem, Green's theorem, that says that if we do a complete closed path line integral, that can also be evaluated by taking the integral over the region enclosed by the line integral of this integrand times dA. So here we have an example where we're going to, well, we're supposed to find the line integral of this, but to do it easy, in an easier way, we're going to use Green's theorem. Now here we have a small area element, which is defined by dx times dy, and here's the vector field over which we're going to do the line integral from 0, 0 to 1, 0 to 0, 1 and back to 0, 0. Now this line right here is defined by the function y equals 1 minus x. And so essentially, when we do the line integral of this region, defined by this vector field, this is what the line integral would look like, and we would have to do it three times over each of the three curves and then just simply add it together. But we can do that instead by taking the right side of that. So what we can say is that this line integral can be defined as the double integral over the region and the partial of q with respect to x. Now this is q right here, so we're going to take the partial of that with respect to x, the partial with respect to x of q, which is xy, minus the partial with respect to y of p, and p in this case is going to be x to the fourth. Notice that the integrand is very much defined by the vector field in that region over which we do a line integral. So if it's a different vector field, you'll get a very different result. Now we're going to multiply this times dA, which is going to be dx times dy. And then, of course, since it's a double integral, we'll have to put in the limits of integration, which we'll do in just a moment. So first, let's do this. So this is equal to the double integral. The partial of this with respect to x is going to be y minus the partial of this with respect to y. Well, that's going to be 0. And then times dx times dy. So let's first integrate from here to here. So we're first going to go in the y direction. So we're going to use our dy. And the limits of integration are going to go from 0 to y. And in this case, y is equal to 1 minus x. So first, limit is going to be from 0 to 1 minus x. And then the second limit is going to go from left to right, which will be from 0 all the way to 1. So it's going to be the limits in the x direction. So we're going to basically do the y first. So we're going to interchange the position of these. So this is going to be equal to integrate this with respect to y. So we're going to do y first. So this is going to be the integral from 0 to 1 of y squared over 2 evaluated from 0 to 1 minus x. And now, of course, we still have our dx left. So when we plug in our upper limit, I'm going to take the 1 half out. So this is equal to 1 half times the integral from 0 to 1. Plug in the upper limit. Of course, when we plug in the lower limit, we get nothing. Plug in the upper limit, we get 1 minus x quantity squared dx. And we can multiply that out. This is equal to 1 half times the integral from 0 to 1 of, that would be 1 minus 2x plus x squared dx. And that's still fairly easy to integrate. As you can tell, these are not very difficult. Most of the time, doing this is much easier than doing the line integral itself. So this is going to be equal to 1 half times, and here we have x minus 2x squared over 2, the 2's cancel out, and then we have plus x cubed over 3, evaluated from 0 to 1. As you can see, when you plug in the lower limit, you get nothing. When you plug in the upper limit, you get 1 half times, so that would be 1 minus 1, and plus 1 third, plus 1 third, and of course, 1 minus 1, that's equal to 0. 1 half times 1 third is equal to 1 sixth. And that would be the result of that line integral, which you can see using Green's theorem is much easier to find using this part of the theorem. And that's how we do line integrals using the concept of Green's theorem. And that's what Green's theorem is. Now, remember again, 
you'll get a very different answer if you do the very same line integral but with a different vector field. So it's really a combination of the path that we take that encloses the region R and definition of the vector field that's within this region right here and you can see that when you have this concept, this particular way of expressing the vector the line integral and notice there's nothing in there that shows that there is a vector field but understand that this is really defined by doing a line integral through a vector field we get this expression and then Green's theorem tells us we can find a much easier way to do that line integral using that concept and that's how it's done that's what we mean by Green's theorem.